I'll walk you through the second uh, second version I did, which is very similar to the first one, except there's a few little changes I made. So um, let's start again. So control layer, as before, it defines the position of the whole thing. And in this case, it has only one slider, box margin. So this guy defines the size of the margin around the whole text itself. So it could be zero and everything is literally sitting on top of each other. Make it 20 as before. Uh, so how do they build it? If I show you the expressions, um, what is my expressionist? Anchor uh, point position is very, very the same, literally exactly the same. Just putting it in here, position, Yep, it looks at the control layer, which I will just hide for now. Now, the thing, it's a little bit different. It's the way I built the whole background itself. So let me show you the size first. So this expression calculates the size of the box, which is basically acting as a background for the text layer. So first of all, we're defining our sources. So control layer which is this guy, which has the box margin on it, which is this layer, uh, this, this variable. Now S, I'm using it as my um, source, which is referring to this layer, but I'm using index minus one, which means it's using index one less um, lower than index of this layer, which in, case, in this case is number four. Uh, instead of referencing the, the name layer directly in here, as in, um, name in brackets, in like those parentheses, I'm using index minus one. So when I duplicate this layer and put it here, it will automatically fit into the uh, the title uh, size. I'm doing it because it's sometimes when you have like multiple layers, like, like three or four, it's easy just to duplicate it and then change a few parameters on position and don't worry about the source code, which is, let's say, in this case, staying the same. Okay, so um, then I'm using this S variable to calculate, again, source rect at time, to calculate the value of this layer at a given time. So in this case, I'm using width and height only. And afterwards, once I have these values, I want to add a margin around this box. So this is where the box margin comes in. So then I can you know, play with it and just, just ad adjust it on the fly. Okay, let me just go back to expressionist. So at the end, you have the box width total. So you have, just going this again from the top, defining variables, then feeding those variables into your controllers and then using this variable, the source, to calculate the size of the text layer itself. Now, the one thing you need to know about this expression, the source rect at time, it looks at the layer and then this um, decides. It calculates the size of this layer at a given time, except it doesn't take scale into account. It only looks at this layer as it is at 100% scale. So even if it's like 50%, as you can see, the whole thing stays as before. So it ignores the scale. So that's why um, all my layers, like, the text ones are at 100% scale. And if I want to change their size, I use the character uh, panel likewise, okay? So that's the one thing you have to keep in mind. You can use the scale to animate it, etc. but at the end, it will use 100% scale to calculate the size of the box. Okay, so that was the size expression. Now looking at the anchor point, similar expression as before, we're just putting the anchor in the middle. Now things get interesting when you look at the position. So um, again, from top to bottom, defining the layer minus one with index, which is the name uh, layer itself, defining control, looking at the box margin. And now based on the S variable, which is which in this case ref is referring to the name itself, I'm looking, to, uh, first I'm defining X and Y position. So I'm defining this position over here. Because this is, this is um, the, the After Effects calculates position from the anchor point. So in this case, 
If I look at the, the positions values 247 and 919 of the name layer, this is basically values of the layer in the comp space. Okay, so I'm defining those, those two starting values. And then I need to find the text height value. So once you have this, um, the height itself, because we're going to use this in here to offset this layer from the text itself. So let's look at the X. We have X value um, on this axis. I'll just hide those two layers to uh, make it a bit easier to understand. Then we have to take away the box margin because if you remember, we added a box margin to the shape layer size. So the shape layer, it's not only the size of the text layer, it's actually extra, you can call it padding on the side, right? So we have to take it away. But I have to halve it as in split it by two, because if I don't, this is what happens. Let me just apply this. It goes way too much into the left. Okay, because, just apply this, because the margin is applied only once. So this value, box margin 20, is applied only once, not twice. So basically, um, 10 pixels is added here, and 10 pixels is added here. So, so that's why we have to offset it by half of the margin to make sure the layer itself, the, the Byron one, is put, it's perfectly centered uh, against the text layer itself. Hopefully that makes sense. Now for the Y, Y position, uh, the starting one, it's all the way here. So we have to offset it up. So we have to take away the half of the text height. That's why it's divided by two. So once you have, uh, once After Effects does those two calculations, we're just feeding them into the array at the end as a new X, new Y. And that's how you get this perfect positioning over there. So hopefully this all that makes sense because that's actually quite a few little um, things to kind of think about. So let me clear the guide. So now to position the title, the way it works, it's, let me just bring up the old expressions. There you go. It's very similar as before. Anchor point expression, I'm decided to put it in here because I want to offset it from this layer by exactly two margin widths by this amount twice, basically. So by 20 pixels altogether. So as in like 10 and 10. So um, if you look at the position expression for the title, it's very similar to the previous expressions used as in um, in the previous example, in this example. So we're defining our sources, uh, name text, which is this one, and then control, which is our like trusty control layer. We're defining box margin. Then we're grabbing X and Y of this layer. And then we just have to add box margin. So by adding 20 pixels, it pushes this layer by 10 and 10, it just pushes it directly there. If you look at the expressions on the shape layer, which is acting as a background for our title, it looks very similar to these expressions. It's literally, I duplicated it, and just put it this layer underneath the title. And then because I'm using the index minus one, in this case, this layer, this expression is referencing this layer to calculate the width and height. That's why I didn't want to reference it before, as I mentioned, directly as in name or title or some other word here, because otherwise I have to go into the expression and change it. So expression is exactly the same as in, on this side. That anchor point is exactly the same, as you can see. Now position expression, on this background layer for the title, it's nearly identical to the expression used in the previous shape layer, except we are adding the uh, text height, not subtracting it. Because if you look back on it, that's what's different. 
that's about it. But everything else is the same. So this way, shape layers always stay behind the text layers. They always, like in this case, they touch each other, like there is no gap in there. And I have a control to, if I just open this up, I can make it a little bit bigger or smaller and so on. I can even make it zero and everything perfectly fits. So in next tutorial, uh, which is a little bit more advanced, I would explain how to deal with stuff like this, basically the senders and punctuation. It's a little bit more tricky, so that's why I'm leaving it as a separate tutorial because I want to get more in depth of all the codes I'm using to counter all of this kind of little offset.